Well, welcome to our Bible study today. This, of course, is our epistle lesson from this past Sunday, the fourth Sunday in the season of Epiphany. And I told our folks I'm going to get back to posting this both on our YouTube channel and maybe on occasion links to our Facebook page. Uh, because I, we did have a, a good audience for that, and I know some of you are interested in some of these midweek Bible studies. This lesson is really intriguing, and people in Sunday churches, their jaw dropped. They're like, what in the world? So I said, we got to talk about this one. So we're going to post this. This is really an interesting lesson. Remember again the context. We know that the book of 1 Corinthians was written by a guy named Paul. So there you go. We also know that Paul was writing to the Corinthians who were struggling with uh, a couple of different things. Conflict between Jews and also Gentiles. The Jews thought that since they were the original Christians, they had preeminence over the people who were Gentiles. The Gentiles said, but wait a minute, Jesus makes us all equal. So these things were conflicting with each other. But we also had a money issue, didn't we? Money, 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 money. You had rich people that were coming in, and uh, they seemed to think they wanted to lord it over everybody because they were so rich and so uh, magnificent, and so they had position and power and money. And so this created a lot of conflict. That actually is later on down the road in 1 Corinthians where we see that with Holy Communion, where there were divisions. They had these big potluck suppers. The rich would come in and grab all the good food. Nothing was left for the poor. The people who really needed the food didn't get the food. And so Paul was, of course, pointing out how inconsistent that is with our Christian faith. So, now we get to today's lesson, and it seems like awkward because this doesn't seem to be a lesson that would in any way apply to things that we have going on in our world today, or at least uh, in our lives. But it does. So see, this is the key. What does it mean to us today? How do we apply it today? What it means is what it means. What it means is what Paul meant it to mean to us. But how do we apply it? That's a challenge. So let's first of all explain what Paul was talking about. So let's read it. Now, concerning food that is sacrificed to idols. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Right way, right? This has nothing to do with our context. We don't run into this on a daily basis where we have food offered to idols. You're looking at me like, we don't? <laughs> What's that look for? You apparently have forgotten our conversation about me and vegans. No, I, I, I get that. I get that. <laughs> I get that, but you're jumping ahead to our day. This is their context, right? So there doesn't seem to be a direct context for this. So <clears throat> concerning food sacrifice items, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Okay? That's in quotes. So it's meant to be, again, a verse or something from which he's quoted. We know that all of us possess knowledge. Um, gnosis, knowledge. Uh, knowledge from... Where? They're, you know, some people sure don't seem like they have any knowledge, right? Seem to lack common sense and lacking in knowledge. But as Christians, the Holy Spirit has given us what we need to know to have a relationship with God. So I think you need to keep that in mind. When he says knowledge, he's not talking about worldly knowledge. He's not talking about knowledge of what, what uh, a pi is or how to figure a square root or, or any of these types of scientific things he's talking about understanding in our relationship with God. We all have some knowledge about our understanding of God. So the problem is, what does it go on? Knowledge puffs up. <clears throat> so knowledge can be a source of pride. It makes us think we're more important than what we are. Huh. Huh. Oh my goodness. You do see this all the time on Facebook, people who think they know more than they really do know, right? They're always puffing themselves up and saying, oh, I, feel, I actually was told that about the Bible one time by some, um, they were trying to dispute with me a point in Greek because it says in the King James Version of Bible this, and I'm like, but it's not what that word means. It's an English translation from 500 years ago 
that you are interpreting probably differently than what the King James people interpreted as, and it was their best uh, corollary, corollary to what the Greek was saying, and they're wanting to fight me about this. They actually unfriended me because they literally said, you are ignorant, and I can't believe that you're a pastor, and boom, they, wow. they uh, ignorant, because I disagreed with the, their beloved King James Version of the Bible. Their understanding of what the King James Version of the Bible had to say, which is just a translation of the original Greek. And I'm like, oh my goodness, knowledge puffs us up. Well, you know, they watched a YouTube channel somewhere, right? Of some guy who lives at home with his parents, is 50 years of age, and still living home with his parents, and probably, uh, you know, what can you say? I don't know. But YouTube never lies, right? Right. All these people living at home producing YouTube channels, they wouldn't lie to us. Knowledge puffs us up. See, we think we know it all. But love, oh, this in itself builds up. Builds up what? See, knowledge makes me think I've got something over you. Love builds you up. You see the difference? Knowledge is about me. Love is about you. What do I do? How do I help you? Anyone who claims to know something does not have the necessary knowledge. I love that. So the one thing I know for certain is that I'm absolutely 100% ignorant of many things. And we need a little bit more uh, reserved opinion of the things that we think we know. If you don't go into conversation about something and with somebody and say, I may be wrong, you may have the wrong opinion of yourself, is what Paul is trying to say. You are thinking way too highly of yourself. But anyone who loves God is known by him. So he's making a distinction here. Let me read this together and let's hit that last point. So concerning food sacrifice idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him, is known by God, okay? So he's trying to get to food sacrifice idol because obviously this is a massive thing, but he's doing something beforehand to prepare you for what he's about to say. And he's talking about knowledge. Y'all think you got knowledge. It's really about love because love builds other people up. That's the important thing. And if you got love, you don't access God by knowledge. We access God through love. There are so many Christians that disfellowship with one another because we disagree with each other's opinions about what the Bible is trying to tell us. Really? I'm going to outright tell you something else I know for a fact. I am wrong about many things about the Bible and my understanding of God, and that's okay. I'm a work in progress. So are you. So this is why I am outright telling you, do not ever go to a church where they say, we got all the answers. I'd be running away from there. Okay? I want to go to a church that says, let's explore together. That's Where the pastor understands that I have some knowledge as a pastor. I do have some knowledge as a pastor that you don't have. I do understand Greek. I do understand Hebrew. I understand a, bu a bunch of things that maybe you don't understand. But I will tell you what, somebody with an 8th grade education is going to school me on my faith. And that has happened many times in this church. I'm so grateful for this church because this church really has humbled me. And let me know it's not about knowledge. And of all the knowledge in the world, if you don't have love, what does Paul say you are? Clanging symbol. Clanging symbol. You're making noise. You're not in harmony with everybody else, man. This is what it's all about. So if you're disfellowshipping with other Christians because they disagree with you, Paul is saying you're in the wrong. We're getting the food, hang tight. Hence, so now he's going to get his conclusion. So what does this say? If this is the important thing, what does this say about food to idols? So before I get there, this is something I, I he doesn't go in the direction you would think he'd go in with this. 
So let's take a listen to what he says. Hence, as to eating the food offered idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists. And that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things, and through, through whom we exist. There's only one God, right? Is what he's saying. So, up to this point, what do you think his point is going to be? Before you read on, uh, if you have food that is offered to idols, would it be okay to eat that food, do you think, according to this? Yeah, sure, who cares? Right? Hang tight, because you're doing... Uh, maybe. Yeah, but you got to wait for what Paul's I know. Gonna, you got to wait for Paul. You read ahead. I saw you reading ahead back there, cheater. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm messing with you. It's okay. You're allowed to cheat. And look ahead. That's what we're supposed to do is hold each other accountable. He's saying that it doesn't matter because um, there's no other gods anyway. It could be offered to another god, but there's nothing there, so... There's nobody standing behind the food that's offered to God, to the other gods. It's just food, right? Right. So I am already telling you, just so it doesn't cause any conflict, I'm going to tell you as close an example as we can get here. I, we have a Hindu temple just about, what, seven, eight miles from here? Going in Monroeville. Wonderful place. Oh, everybody should go there at some point and visit they always open their doors, I think it's like at 4 or 5 p.m. every single day, and they have a meal. Anybody can come up to their Hindu temple, and they will feed them. Now, it's vegetarian, vegan, maybe. I don't know whether it's vegan or vegetarian. I don't know. I would um, bet vegetarian. I bet you it's just vegetarian, too. It's, they're not worried about, uh, because they do honor and respect cows, and they do have cows in their society, and they do milk their cows. They would never eat their cows, but I'm sure they're okay uh, uh, drinking the milk from cows and so forth, from my understanding of it. So, it, 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 but they're, they're very gracious, and if you want to talk to them, they'll talk to you about your faith, okay, and so forth, and about their faith, and they have idols there, they're idols, if you know, the Hindus believe, they're, this is really contrary to what we think about Hindus. There is only one God in Hinduism, but there are many incarnations of this God. Okay. okay? And so they have many faces of this God, and they have all these idols to these different incarnations of this God and so forth. So some Christians really freak out and say, they're worshiping idols. Well, they would say they're worshiping one God, who's been revealed in many different ways. But uh, this is probably as close as we can come to this. Some Christians would walk in there and say, there's Satan here. There's evil here. What would Paul say? There's only one God. There's no Satan here. There's no evil here. There are people who are trying to worship God. They might be directing it in the wrong way, but it doesn't taint this food. Go ahead and eat this food because it's all right. It's just, it, there's no idol standing behind that, right? right. It's just food. But, here's where we get to the part where Paul says, but, take a listen to what he says. So yes, I would encourage you, if you're okay with it, I think you should go to the Hindu temple, I think you should go and say hi, I think you should go and say, may I have some food, and I think you should listen to them about their faith. Really do. I think it's a fantastic thing. But, listen to what he says. It's not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. So yeah, who cares? Go to the Hindu temple and eat their food. But not everybody has that knowledge. Remember, what's important to Paul again? Love. Love. The love of God for us, right. which in turn means that we should have love for each other. Each other. So what happens if somebody sees this and they're like, oh no, it's satanic up there, and I might lose my soul if I go into that temple, and this might happen. What should we do? Try to grace them with love. And Just knowledge. Don't, don't try to hammer them with knowledge. Uh, no, okay. What we do is we love. surround them with love. Okay. How does that work out? 
What does that mean we're supposed to do? Well, here's what he says. It's not for everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now that they think of the food that they eat as food that is offered to an idol. And their conscience being weak, therefore would be defiled. So he's saying that there's some Christians who still have this superstition that there might be other gods. And they're concerned that if they eat that, Satan might gain possession of them or whatever the case might be. Now we can sit there and mock them and laugh at them and say, you just don't have the right knowledge about God. Well, you know what? That's where they're at in their faith. And you're going to sit there and be judgmental of them? There are many places in my faith that I think if you're looking at it, you know, in terms of knowledge. I have this much knowledge and you got this much knowledge. And I can sit there and say, come on. See, this is where it puffs you up. Come on. Get over it. This is what you should know. I mean, my mom, my mom, good example. My mom was asking me about my PhD thesis. And it goes into some territories that are very uncomfortable for some Christians because it's some of the things I'm comfortable asking and some of the questions I'm comfortable ask, uh, and willing to ask. And so I start getting to one, I start saying, well, it's about this. And I'm just starting at it very innocently. She said, I don't want to hear that. Wow. She said, I don't need to, this time in my life, she's 89, I don't need this in my life right now. I don't need to have to wrestle through this. Okay. It's okay, Mom. You don't have to wrestle through that. Because guess what? We don't get to heaven through knowledge. Am I right? I think I am. My knowledge is right. But if I were trying to insist that everybody has to have this knowledge that I've gained from all this study, I'm lacking in love. Now... Guess what? That's maybe in this area that I've got this knowledge. There are other areas where my mom is like this and I'm down here. Right? we got to be more humble, people. Sometimes I've got the knowledge. There are other times I'm absolutely ignorant. And sometimes I'm not even sure. I think i got the knowledge, but you know what? I really don't. And so maybe I need to listen more, and most importantly, love more. And not insist on my knowledge. It's all about love. So how does this food thing work? Offered idols. What is Paul saying? Let's finish this. And then I'm going to explain to you a little bit of the context of how this worked out. Um, so it's not everyone. Some, some have become so accustomed to idols, blah, 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 that they're weak. And they think by actually eating this food offered idols, they will become defiled. Food is not going to bring you close to God. So yeah, you might sit here and say, oh, I can do this, and I'm going to demonstrate my faith by eating this food that's offered idols. But that doesn't get you anything in the kingdom of heaven. It puffs you up to pound your chest and say, oh, i got knowledge you don't have. Okay, food is not going to bring you close to God. You're no worse off if you eat that food and no, no better, uh, if you do not eat that food, and no better off if you do. But take care that your liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to those who are weak, those who do not have that knowledge. Or maybe still living in what you might think of as a superstition. How dare you judge them? That's just where they're at in their faith. Again, in another circumstance, their faith might far exceed yours. Maybe have a little bit more humility and a lot more love, is what Paul is trying to say. For if others see you, the one who possesses knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience weep and encouraged to the point of eating that food sacrifice idols, and therefore stumble and fall? So I just encourage you, I said, uh, hey, listen. I got no problems with going to the Hindu temple. I got that knowledge. Paul says that. But what happens if I have a member of the church who maybe is a new Christian, who came out of a cult of some sort, 
He says, oh, that's evil. I can't do that. Well, I, yeah, I think they might be wrong. But am I going to make a, a, a show of it and say, well, I'm going up to the Hindu temple and, you know, deal with it, person. You need to grow up in your faith. What Paul is saying is that is a very ungracious, unkind, unloving thing to do. What I should do, especially as a pastor, is say, then let's not go there. I won't go there because I'm not going to cause you so. I, I love your food at the Hindu temple. I'm not going to go there because I don't want to cause you to lose heart or to lose faith. Because my rights, my knowledge, are not as important as my love. This, I will tell you what, this is applicable today, everywhere, and everything that's going wrong in the United States of America, and that includes all of you. I don't care which side of the political aisle you're on, which side of the aisle you're on, on any issue, you think, you're right, I have my rights. If you're sitting here, we Christians, I, let me use a good example. We had this COVID epidemic in 2020, and um, there are a whole bunch of y'all Christians beating your chest and saying, this government has no right to tell me what to do. We have Christian freedom here. We should do whatever we want to do. But you know, you got to hold that to the other side of the Bible. It says, respect and be obedient to your government. But we're sitting here pounding our chest about my right to worship God. And I don't have to take this back. You know, I don't have to do this. And I don't have to isolate. We're going to go to church anyway. And yeah, of course, a lot of Christians died because of it. Right? Pastor in Ohio, not far away from here, was defiant on this, and 50 years of age, got COVID dead. Wow. Okay? All right. Because he was defiant. My rights to worship. We got to get rid of that word, my rights, as Christians. We're sitting here pounding our chest about our rights, about what we know, and how we have something over top of you. And we're forgetting the most important thing, love. You know what we concluded was the most loving thing? To be obedient to the government out of respect. We are called to be good citizens, so we listened to the government. We didn't sit and pound our chest and say, my rights, my rights, my rights, my rights. We sat there and said, we need to accommodate each other. Whether we agree with it or not, we accommodate each other out of reverence for Christ and out of love for one another. This is what Paul is trying to remind us of. We are all about love, not about knowledge, not about what we think we know, not about puffing ourselves up. If you're pounding your chest and puffing yourself up, we are not following what Paul is trying to tell us. He goes, he finishes with this. So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed if you act in this manner. Oh, aren't you proud of yourself? By insisting on your knowledge and your rights, somebody else's life is destroyed. You're going to be answerable to God for that. But, when you, you, thus sin, okay, you insisted on your rights, your way, your freedom, and because of that, somebody else stumbled and fell, you're the one that sinned. You're going to be held accountable for that, Paul says. You, the person who thinks you're stronger, are going to be held accountable for the people who wrestle and struggle and fall. But when you sin in this way, Paul says, against members of your family, families are known by love, not by knowledge, people. You wound their conscience when it is weak. You have sinned against Christ. In demanding your liberty... You have sinned against Christ. Therefore, if food is the cause of their failing, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Woo! So now you see how this has massive applications in our church. It's not about me. It's not about my rights. It's about my obligation to love. That should always be the first question, how do I best love you so I can support you? Not how do I impose my knowledge upon you, 
It's not, you don't get to heaven by knowledge. You get to by heaven by knowing God's love. Right? By having experience with God's love. And the way we have experience with God's love is by other Christians loving you. And so this has got to be our answer. We as Christians in this next year or two, we've got a tough year, I think, coming up in the United States. We need to learn how to better love each other. Okay? We need to be the examples because this is the only way out of the mess that we are in this country. Not about forcing our knowledge or forcing our politics or forcing ourselves upon other people. This is what Paul is trying to say. It's about how we love each other. I'm not seeing a lot of love going on right now. Okay? The more you committed are to a particular ideology, the less loving you are. Because we're not here to be committed to an ideology or to knowledge. We're here to be committed to Jesus Christ and to the love that he has for us. Ooh. I didn't even give a background about why food to idols would have been an important thing or why this was an issue in Corinth. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly say that and then finish reiterating the point again. The reason why this was an issue in Corinth is because in Corinth they were building temples to many of the Roman gods. And it was a place of employment for Christians. And so Christians were going and working at these temples and helping build these temples and also getting the opportunity to have, and some of them were hungry and they would go home with food from these places and people were all up in arms. How dare you? But they're like, it's just food. Right? It was offered to the idols of these temples that they're helping to build that were brought as sacrifices. And others were seeing this as an awful thing. And Paul is just saying, look, if it's a problem, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Let's find a better way to love each other. So let's, let's, uh, let's do that. America, Christians, we've really done a crappy job these last years. We've been so committed to ideologies and knowledge and puffing up our, what we know and pushing it in the face of other people. It's time for us to lift up something different. We are called to love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to love. We've got too many people puffed up in their knowledge. Too many Christians can't do anything about the rest of the world. But Christians, we're puffed up in our knowledge. We think we know more than what we do. We think we're so smart. We want to force our way on people. We think our ideology is the right way. We think our biblical interpretation is the right way. And in so doing, we've lost what Christianity is really about. Holding out the love of God to others. I don't care. What you think you know about the Bible. They don't care what you think we should do as a country. Don't care. I really don't. If you're a Christian, all I really care about is you can love me. And so God, help us to change the narrative in this world. This world needs Jesus. It's not going to get Jesus through knowledge and through ideologies. It's going to get Jesus through the loving actions of us Christians. Let us be kind. Let us be loving. Let us hold out our hands and offer the love of Jesus Christ to this world. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you all and send you forth in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining us here online, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. And for those here today, thank you all for coming too. Blessings to you.